I saw I saw you mouth second, Christine. Can you say that again? Second. Perfect. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Great. Um, we're first looking at any adjustments to the agenda. Annie, can you take us through them? Uh, yes, item 4M. So we will discuss the school department capital request for special town meeting and annual town meeting. Um, there may be a request for a vote on that. Depends how that discussion goes. And we will review all town capital requests by funding source and capital requests by department. Great. Thank and, you. Yeah, those are the only adjustments. That is the only adjustment. Okay, great. Moving now to public comment. Um, I'm not sure that I see any members of the public here, but if there, if anyone wanted to make comment as though they were a member of the public, um, just raise your digital hand and you have three minutes. Ideally, it's something pertinent to the agenda and we'd love to hear from you. I'll give it a moment. Okay, seeing none, let's continue with the agenda. Um, first up, 4A is the Hadley Public Schools condition, uh, Conditions of Assistance. And here to tell us about that is, uh, let's see, I guess, Annie, you're going to tell us yeah, about that. Well, actually, I'll, be, I'll let you know why you're looking at it. So <laughs> the Conditions of Assistance annually, the chairperson of the school committee, the superintendent of schools, and uh, our administrator for special education, director of student services, Celia Utley all have to sign annually that the district complies with federal and state regulations pertaining to um, all laws pertaining to students with disabilities. It's a requirement of the funding that we receive. Celia also annually takes the administrators through their responsibilities under IDEA. We do not need to vote to adopt these, essentially it is required that we adhere to them. Celia is here to answer any questions. The conditions of assistance were linked into your agenda. And certainly um, if you have any questions or Celia, if there's anything you'd like to add about what they are. Recording in progress. Celia, would you like to add anything to that? Um, I don't think there's anything to add. We already did our, I did a, you know, like a slide presentation with um, the leadership team, just sort of going through that. Um, and then um, yeah, it just it's to get the 240 and 262 grants around 150, 160,000 each year that we get. Um, so that's all I have to add, unless anybody else has any questions. Great. Thank you, Celia. Committee members, any questions for Celia or Annie about this? Okay, seeing none. Um, Annie, do we have to vote to approve this? No, you don't vote to approve them. Hey, Mary, you'll be signing, and that's signature states essentially that you are stating the entire governing board acknowledges that we're in compliance and must be in compliance with these regulations and laws. Great. I look forward to receiving that and I'll sign it when I get it. Thank you. Okay. No problem. Moving on to the next item of the agenda is the HEA presentation regarding question two on the ballot uh, this upcoming election cycle. And here to tell us about that is Mr. Richards. Thank you for having the time to hear from me today. Um, I asked to be here so that I could speak on behalf of the MTA and the HEA on question two. The last time we spoke, you were in support of the Thrive Act. Today, I'm once again seeking verbal support for this act as it exists as question two on the Massachusetts ballot this November. This would be the initiative to appeal, to repeal the competency assessment requirement for high school graduation. The initiative amends section 1B of chapter 69 in Massachusetts general law to state that the MCAS will no longer be a requirement for graduation and that the students will have fulfilled the districts and that students who have fulfilled the district's requirement but did not pass the MCAS may request a diploma. This diploma will not reflect their scores on the MCAS. In Massachusetts, there are roughly 287,000 high schoolers uh, enrolled, let's say a fourth of those are 10th graders, just for easy math. Uh, that's 71,750 students. A big argument against this is that it only affects 1% of students. That'd be 717 students. In Massachusetts, there are about 400 high schools. So that means that we're talking about one or two students per high school that this would affect. 
Today, we have the ability to reach one or two students. Maybe all they need is to have this weight lifted to stand. It's hard to reach every student. I know, I teach every student at the elementary school. But when I have the chance to reach one, I do. And today we have that opportunity together. So I will ask you, please voice verbal support for this ballot question. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kenny. I appreciate you bringing this to our attention again. Um, school committee colleagues, you might recall that we did have a conversation about this. We were in unanimous agreement to support the Thrive Act. In particular, there was a strong vocal support for doing away with the MCAS for as a requirement for graduation and leaving it to um, schools to determine um, the best competency determinations toward graduation. And um, I would welcome um, that continued support for this question too. I'll start by saying uh, I do support this uh, this question on the ballot. I'm uh, glad that it's uh, that it's making its way to the ballot. Um, I welcome my colleagues to share their support or uh, thoughts or concerns. I'll go. I'm in, I'm in support of question two. I, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I, I don't think the MCAS should be used to determine graduation. Simple as could be. Thank you. Thank you, Ethan. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so I also am in support. I, I think it's quite clear cut for me as it is. Ethan, um, I don't think it should be a requirement. So I, you have my support in that. Thank you, Tara. Christine. I'm in agreement. Um, I, I, I I've i never, uh, Just we, we haven't had an issue yeah. like other, other districts have, but I've always found that um, it's an undue stress that does not need to be uh, put on our students, especially for ESLs. If what? Uh, I, I, I just remember, like I said, I, I, I think I've told the story where we had a student that uh, it was it was so incredibly difficult mm -hmm. um, having, you know, she was a Polish speaking student. And so that oh. it just didn't make, you know, my heart just absolutely broke for her so um yeah i i agree that right should be they should be eliminated great thank you christine have you all right kenny there you have it we are expressing our verbal support we look forward to this ballot measure um being on the on the ballot this coming election and um hopeful for a positive outcome thank you very much for your time everyone have a wonderful day Thanks. Okay, we're going to move on to the next item of the agenda, and uh, that is the Panama field trip. And here to tell us about that is Ruth Ann Fitzgibbons. Hello, Ms. Fitzgibbons. Hello. Thank you so much. I um, We're already approved to go, so what I'm actually hoping for a vote tonight is that I would be allowed to extend it to eighth graders. Obviously, this is a family choice anyhow, so um, nobody would certainly let their child go if they couldn't handle it, I think. Um, so I'm just hoping I can, um, We I, I have just enough people, but I'm thinking that it would be nice to have a bigger group of students going. That's terrific. And I, I agree. I think there's a there's a, a self-selection process between the, the families of uh, being able to say whether their child is able to um, be on a trip like this, but I think it's really valuable. Students rise to the bar that we set for them and to provide them an incredible opportunity for learning as such would be, I think would be really powerful. So if a family can afford to send their eighth grader, I think we should definitely um, welcome them. That's my personal opinion. I'd love to hear from my colleagues. Tara, you you're on unmute, so I'll ask you first. Yeah, sure. Um, so I am, I, I am excited about this. I am in support of it. Um, I actually had the opportunity when I was in eighth grade to go to Mexico with the Spanish club. Um, and so I guess my only question is, I know at that time, 
they they made an exception for me and let me go as an eighth grader, um, but I had to have a one on one. Now, I don't know if that was just the school at the time. I didn't know if there were any um, restrictions or requirements in students age that we would need to meet. I'm in support of it. I just want to make sure that age wise, we don't, you know, we're following whatever they state. Ruthann, do you want to comment on the age question? Oh, Annie, go ahead. I'm happy to. Go ahead, Ruthann, if you'd like to. That's fine. Okay. It's funny. I, a part of what Tara said broke up. But are you saying, um, sorry about that. It's probably me. Um, but um, is, is, are you saying that the, the, the age, the, the company that we're going with would support the age or the work would support the age? Do um, we need additional guests? Just that it's, it's, it's appropriate and there aren't any additional requirements that need to be met to have a student of that age to go. Requirement is that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, what is that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that's beyond wonderful. I see you saying no, so I think that's beyond wonderful. I think it's great that yes. you're explaining it. Thank you. Yes. The company themselves has had middle school groups before. So well. we would be just a little unusual that we would mix it with both groups but um I, like i said i think the kids that choose to go the families that choose to send them um they know what they're doing so yeah thank you cool. great annie did you want to add anything to that no that's okay that's spot on. all right thank you. great christine i'm all for it awesome I think it's wonderful ethan what? So, same here. I was actually hoping there'd be an exception for a, a fourth grader and a second grader, but I don't think that's on the table yet. Yeah, I saw that coming. I did. Yeah. <laughs> I, actually, Ethan, honestly, when my boys were in sixth and fifth grade, I did bring them with me to Nicaragua. So, um, I'll they, sneak they, them in a suitcase. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Terrific. Thank you so much for thinking about it and for making this opportunity available to our eighth graders, Ruthann. It's uh, it's wonderful. Um, do I hear a motion to vote to uh, allow eighth graders on the Panama field trip? So moved. And a second? Second. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank Terrific. Motion thank passes. You so thank much. you, Ruthann. Thank you. You're welcome. And I'm also, okay. I'm also D on here, too. <laughs> Oh, you are terrific. Okay, so tell us about hosting students from Spain. So, and I was I was mentioning to Annie, I, I, I'm going to tell you about it, um, and you've heard about it from last year. I think it was from we we had students from France, and what I'm actually hoping is that we can talk about this, and it can just be a thing that you say, "Yep, it, when it happens, let let it happen." Um, this year, it's Hummingbird Tours. They have a program where they bring students over. This year, it's from Spain. They stay with families. Um, the families really just have to provide um, meals for them. They have all kinds of excursions. They have their own um, uh, their own spending money. Uh, they come to school three days with the kids. We did it with the kids from France last year. It was great. So I'm hoping that we can uh, once again invite our families to host students from Spain. Terrific. I, what a wonderful opportunity. And I, I don't know about the uh, case by case versus uh, all of them. Um, I'll talk with Annie about, you know, wh which which model makes sense. But for now, let's uh, take this one specifically. Um, colleagues, how do you feel about uh, supporting another uh, group from Spain in the community? I'm in support of it. Thank you, Tara. I support it. Thanks, Christine. I support it as well. All right, Ethan. Terrific. Yeah, it's so, so great to hear that the hosting of the French students went well and that students really appreciated it and that we found the host families for that. That was my biggest concern was whether we had enough host families. So it's uh, it's really wonderful that we'll be hosting another group. I think it enriches the, the lives and experiences of our students. So I'm really excited to see this happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very you, much. You each, you each said your support, but would you mind doing, was there a motion and a second to approve this? Did I miss one? Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. All second. right, thank you, Ethan. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you so much. All right. It's official. Thank you. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks so much. Good to see you tonight. Thank you, you too.
All right, moving on to item E. Um, Annie, tell us about the acceptance of donations, school supplies from Walmart. Yes, very straightforward. Walmart, uh, very generous, donated a number of things to Hadley Elementary School, crayons, scissors, binder clips, glue, all kinds of arts and crafts materials. We're very grateful. And per school committee policy, um, it requires a vote of the school committee to accept said donation. Great. Do I hear a motion to accept the Walmart school supply donation? So moved. Seconded. Is there a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Thank you so much. And please extend our thanks to Walmart, Annie. Yes, we will. Thank you. All right. Moving on to school safety. Um, Equature. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Equature weapons. Equature. 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 Yeah. All right. Equature weapons detection system. Intriguing. Yeah. So Tell we did it. speak about this in the summer time. We applied for a grant at the uh, recommendation of Hadley Police, and we were selected to receive equipment, weapons detection equipment. The equipment that we will receive is no charge to the schools. There are no future charges to the schools. There are no future licensing fees for the school schools. This is equipment that works in um, concert with our existing camera system, and it is designed specifically to identify weapons. And then when it thinks, the camera thinks it has identified a weapon, it sends an alert to the people that we have identified. So there'd be a small group of people that would receive an alert. And that alert would be the image that this camera thinks is potentially a weapon and also indicating precisely within the image what, um, what it believes to be a weapon. The people who get, we determine who gets initial notification, that's something that we are talking with public safety about. Public safety says they'd like to have people who get that initial notification, that would be a small group of people. Anybody within that, when they see the image, the images come to one's email, laptop, and also to their cell phone as a text. As the system is designed that anybody that's in that first notification group, if they look at that, or they also are able to see something and they say, yep, this needs to be escalated, there's something happening, they can hit escalation in the system, and then automatically a broader notification goes out to a second tier of people State police are contacted, 911 is activated, a whole slew of things happen. So the system is designed in terms of school safety to assist schools in trying to prevent dangerous weapons from entering a school building, working with those cameras, so trying to prevent that from happening, and then reducing the amount of time that we certainly hope and do not expect that this is something that is, that is um, in our future but it certainly does not uh, hurt in any way to be prepared. So by the system also assists with making sure that things move very quickly if someone believes that in fact there is a weapon on the premises. That's what it's designed to do. We'll speak in executive session in more detail about um, actual deployment, location of cameras, things of that nature. Um, but this was more of a general conversation just to make the community aware. Again, this is something that through notifications and we also uh, spoke very briefly about one of our summer meetings that we had applied for this grant at the uh, suggestion of the police. And we were fortunate in that we were selected to receive this. Great, Annie, thank you for explaining that. Um, I do have many questions um, and I will ask them uh, momentarily. I'll first uh, allow my colleagues to chime in with their questions. Tara, Ethan, Christine. I don't know if I have any questions at the, at the moment. Okay. I'm later. Yeah, Humira, if you have questions, go ahead. I'm still kind of thinking through it, but by all means, if you have some, please go ahead. Okay, great. Um, 
questions that I have uh, are, and I'll start by saying, I think it was after Parkland where we had a conversation about safety and we, um, I remember suggesting, well, you know, in, uh, inner city schools are safest when it comes to guns because they have those gun, you know, metal detectors at the doors. Why don't we do that? And I remember it was like, wait a second. They, they looked at, everybody looked at me like I had three heads that I was asking for that at that time. Um, so I personally am pleased with the initiative of detecting guns before they even go into a school. Question I have, uh, they start with, uh, you mentioned that there was no uh, cost upfront or ongoing. Um, and you also mentioned that it, it's subsidized by a grant. So I'd like to know, does the grant fund the initial part as well as all future, who's funding the grant, what's in it for them, uh, how many um, schools has this been installed in? Is it a pilot program of, is it Venkata, whatever the, the name of that, that camera system is that we installed? Is this like a early pilot thing that, and we're potential guinea pigs? Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. We do want to learn from these opportunities. Um, so that's a first wave of questions. You want to start there? Sure, I'd love to. And in some of this, I'll be very honest if I'm speculating about what some of those answers might be. So uh, one regarding how how many schools it's deployed at nationwide or they're testing nationwide. I don't have the answer to that, but I can find that out and I can bring that back to this. I don't have the answer to that question. However, um, where we will not pay, so it's, it's currently the funding, grant funding, but also I believe the company wants to make this investment. So how, how would a camera figure out if something is a weapon? Right? So it's no doubt using AI to make that determination. And what would be in it, now this I'm speculating, what would be in it for any company that is creating something that uses artificial intelligence in order to determine, is that what I think it is? So the more the system does it, the better it's going to get. And I would imagine that the better these systems get, given the number, I can't remember how many mass shootings we are at in the country as of yesterday, as in Birmingham yesterday, I think it's over 400 this year, um, that the market would probably be well beyond schools. I mean, in many ways, schools are quite safe. All the doors are locked. People have to be buzzed in, you need an ID. That is not true of a grocery store, not true of most places you go. So there's nothing to say that the, that the company that's, that is, um, selling this product, has created this product with conduction in conjunction with others, I don't believe that they would limit their market to just schools, right? So weapons detection in other venues might be even equally important. Some might argue even more important because those venues are not locked. Um, I will say, so because it's using, and, and when I say that we will never have future costs, we won't if we don't expand the system. So we were granted 12, kind of, we get 12 uh, cameras that work with our cameras. And so if we ever wanted to expand it, we would have to pay for that, for the prices at that time. If we expand the licenses, we would have to pay for that. We're also given a server. The server is separate from the server that we use for Verkata. The two systems work well together. It's not the same system and it's not the same company. And that's because this information that's being fed into the system. I mean, we also, our school security cameras, those cameras don't keep that data forever, time period that we retain that data for unless it's necessary for something else. Whereas these images, these data would, I think the turnaround is, you're talking like 24 hours. I mean, it's, it's gone very quickly because if you detect something, if you detect something that, and also, there could be false positives, right? A machine could see something and think it's something that it isn't, which is why your first, it doesn't go, the machine sees something and then you set off an alert throughout the entire community. 
you have two levels. And then our first level of notification of public safety would be a part of that. Try to say, okay, this clearly not anything, I made a mistake. It's on image on a shirt or saw something that it thought was a weapon when in fact it wasn't. Um, and so those images, really you need them in that moment to keep something out of the building, but you wouldn't retain that data for 10, 15, 30 days. You wouldn't, you'd have it, it's, it just clears out um, within I believe a day. Again, I can confirm exactly how long it's kept on the server. So in terms of cost, I think I answered that question for you that again, we would, if we wanted to expand it, then we would have to pay for that. But for what we're currently getting, it would never be a future cost. What's in it for the company, you heard me speculate, but that seems relatively, that seems pretty reasonable to me, right? That if in fact, this is something that could be beneficial, not just to schools, but to other venues, weapons detection may be something that other people want. We know that um, like anything that uses artificial intelligence, anything, internet searches, anything that the more data, the better. So there is, there is something there, they're definitely getting something out of it, which is practice. Or the, right. So it's, the, it's a, you have a better way of describing this, Humera, but you know what I'm right. saying. Right. Right. So, and it gets at a question that I had was, who is the source of funding? And it's a private source of funding, hoping for an economic impact to their company's bottom line. Um, which, it, it makes sense that they're interested in that. Um, and it I would say, Humera, little... I'm not saying they can do this, but I would imagine, I'm not saying in any way that they promised this or they ever could. But if a company could say, we can with 99% cert certainty guarantee that a gun will never enter X space, yeah, they really, they can afford to. I'm not saying they could get there, but in initial stages, they could. Having been uh, working with AI um, uh, a little bit here and there, um, I do have a lot of questions. I hadn't considered that this was an AI tool. And so I have a lot of questions about the parameters that it would be looking for. Um, as we know, uh, as I'm sure many of you all have read, there's a lot of bias in AI. It's built by a certain demographic of individuals who have certain biases and program those biases in because there isn't as much participation at the table when it comes to AI, um, building out AI. So I, 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 have a, I have a lot of questions about the kind of parameters that it will be searching for. And uh, before I'd be comfortable, mm -hmm. because, you know, uh, it, the, the last thing we're gonna want is, well, it was because a kid was wearing this specific uh, demarcation on their t-shirt mm -hmm. or because it was this combination of color of skin and, uh, you know, low riding pants and, you know, all kinds of um, not fail safe methods mm -hmm. of potentially targeting and then really harming the trust and uh, you know relationship that we have for our kids. So I guess it comes back to how many schools has it been deployed in? How how sure can we be that there that we won't be uh, getting into that situation? What does a potential pilot period look like where we are we are not uh, going right from install to pulling over each kid that has set off this alarm. Um, those, those are some of the questions I have. And also, I mean, I wanna come back and stress, I, I wanna know what parameters it's using in AI to detect that. If, the, if it's just looking at visuals, if it's not, not using millimeter wave or some scientific methodology to actually um, send out signal waves and then be able to see shapes. Um, then it's it's based on you know parameters that humans are entering in, and um, I I need to know what those parameters are in order to feel like I'm protecting our students. Um, that's so. Let's pause there on on my questions. I'd love to 
get any other thoughts or questions that you might have, Tara, Ethan, Christine? Um, is there a way for us to find out more about this technology just in general? Yeah, I was going to suggest that perhaps you can send to me and then I can put in a doc in the publicly available folder all the questions that you have. I can make sure so I do justice to your questions. I don't want to miss any part of them. And then I can get written responses from uh, the company Equator. I can get written responses to all your questions and bring them back to the next school committee meeting. I'm furiously trying to write down questions, but I'm thinking if I do it that way, and then the public will have access to seeing all of the questions that I'm getting responses to, and we can review them in October. Certainly not you trying to support conversation you, here, but that would probably you, be helpful. You also, me. you also have the recording as a resource, Annie, right. to 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 make sure you're capturing it all. So, actually, uh, so if, if actually we, if you could, if if instead of us putting something in writing, if you could count on the recording as a documentation, that would be great. Um, just because. Uh, you're gonna to have to make minutes anyways. And I think it's just really important to capture the spirit of the conversation. There's not Christine. a lot of information. Um, yeah. I mean, actually pulled up their site. It really does not explain it well. It, uh, do we know of any other schools that have in fact used this? Yeah, so I know of one district that we talked, uh, Sergeant Romano and I spoke, with a representative from the company when we were going through the grant. That was the school district we were talking about in Florida. Don't know of any in Massachusetts, but again, I will bring back responses to all of the questions. Sounds like they're, they're a company that has a history in just um, audio and video recording and 911 dispatch related stuff. So public safety recording. Um, but yeah, no mention of this technology on their website. Mm. And they also don't seem like a startup per se. They seem like a well-established company with a previous name um, of DSS Corp. Um, any other thoughts or questions, Tara or Ethan? Uh, I, I'll, I'll just say, I, I mean, I think a lot of the things that were running through my mind, you you captured, Humera. Um, I love the idea of envisioning like a, a way to make our schools safer. Um, and, I, and, and this certainly seems like a, 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 a version of that. Um, but I do have a lot of questions of how they're detecting, what they're detecting, um, and and just better understanding what they're looking for, right? You talked about, you know, sending out the waves, but I'm just thinking about like, how is a camera detecting what's inside somebody's backpack, right? So that's the first thing that goes through my mind. Um, the other thing I just, you know, and this is more of like a, a logistical question is kind of like, where would these cameras be um, within the building, right? There's 12 camera licenses. Um, and so like, where, you know, like just that's more something that comes to my mind, like where would we want these cameras to be? But that's obviously a little bit further down the road. Um, I think at this point, it seems like a really cool idea. And that sounds like really basic, but like, it's a great idea in theory, but I'd love to see it play out so that we can better understand what we'd be putting into our building and what kind of information those this company would be capturing and, and what to what benefit it would be to us. Yeah, yeah I, really good points. Tara. I think I think I just need to understand more about it. So like, as you were talking here and asking these questions and your thoughts, it, it started to get my mind rolling, but then it, it starts to wonder, well, besides looking at this, what other data is it capturing beyond what its intended purpose is for? So I, I think in general, I just, I think I feel like I need to understand more about the technology um, in general. Yeah, and by the way, that former, the former name is DSS Corp and they, they do, Department of Defense related stuff, counter unmanned aerial systems and drones and other things that must fly over and detect whether a group of people at a wedding look fishy or not and should be targeted. Um, but anyways, we look forward to getting more answers, Annie. Thank you so much. And and yeah, um, and in terms of 
more detailed questions, Ethan. I'm not sure if you were on the committee when we went through our last. I don't think I was. I feel like that was one of the meetings I missed, so I probably. Right. And so, you know, that's the kind of thing we would do in executive session, obviously, because right. of, you know, sensitive nature of those kinds right. of uh, things. Um, great. All right. Thank you, Annie, for bringing this to our attention. Hey, sure thing. All right, moving on to some policies. Um, Ethan, I think you're telling us about the policy IHGB. Yes, uh, so this is our this is our first reading uh, as school committee. This is uh, the home cooling policy. Um, uh, not a huge amount of pain here. Um, what we did is we just kind of synthesized um, the idea that uh, students could participate in after school extracurricular activities and leaving that as open as possible at this time. Um, that is the, the, the kind of big, uh, not even big, but the change that we made to the policy. All right, very good. Christine, anything to add being on this committee? I think that was a no. Okay. You're, you're muted. You're muted, Christine. <laughs> One of those days. Okay. So now I think Ethan covered it. There was very little um, that we had to clear up, but we made just a minor adjustment here or there. Okay. Very good. Tara, any questions on this? It is just first reading. So we'll bring it back right. next month, next month. Okay, very good. All right, moving on to the next policy we're looking at is JFBB. Christine, tell us about that one. Okay, so the school choice um, policy, other than a couple of grammatical type things that we changed, the biggest thing that we did change was we took out where it said the resident student uh, students will be given priority placement in any classes or programs within the district. Uh, obviously that doesn't, you know, that's not something that we would do or for or enforce or any, you know, should not be included in the policy at all. Um, they're all, all enrolled students should be equal. Should be equal. Yeah. It, it there's nothing, um, that should change that and then we just changed the wording on number five so that all of our documents will have the same wording uh, when it comes to um, our, our position on non-discrimination. Terrific, thank you. Uh, and this is second reading, so we would be looking for a vote or is it is, would the vote be at the next Remind me again. No, it's, it's, I'm requesting first and final because the attorney has said that number three is actually not even legal. So yeah. we just need to change <laughs> policy. Okay. To your point, Very all good. enrolled students have to be treated equally. You right. can't say some group gets this and another group doesn't. Yeah. All right. Um, do I hear a motion to approve the school choice policy JFBB as presented? So moved. Is there a second? And it all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, very good, motion passes, thank you. Okay, we are moving next to policy ACAB-R um, and Ethan is gonna tell us about that. Yes, we. Uh, this is, we are eliminating this policy, uh, sexual harassment definitions and procedure. Um, it is uh, quite outdated. Uh, we looked at the beginning. We looked. We did our first reading of a number of policies surrounding sexual harassment and, and Title IX and things along those lines. Um, really, what we're doing today is just eliminating this policy because regulations and laws have been updated, and this policy no longer reflects those regulations and laws that have been changed. Andy, did I hit that all right? You did. And a lot of the change to language you've already approved as part Correct. of student handbooks. And so then district policies, the policy subcommittee just went through their own digesting of a first reading of a whole bunch of updated replacement policies for all of our ACAs, ACABs, a whole bunch, which you'll see next month. But do you know we have 
up-to-date language mm -hmm. in the handbook, so you already approved. It's important is that we don't want policies on the website that are not in line with current regulation and law. So I have a I have a question about removing something and not replacing it with anything I, and not sending people in the direction of what we do have in, in turn. Um, if you're a person evaluating our district as a place you want to send your students, um, they won't necessarily go combing through the handbook. Um, if you're a parent, um, if, if you're if you're a parent, ultimately, it's you know school committee policy that, of course, the law the the law is what it is, and so we have to be consistent with the law, uh, as we are with all other policies. Um, but should we not be putting something in its place? So you do still currently have several AC policies, which will be updated. So on the district website, not just in handbooks, but where anybody can go to see district policies, you will still see policies on non-discrimination on the basis of sex and policies that speak to sexual discrimination and sexual harassment. This particular one, the attorney felt as though the language and procedures are so far outdated that these other ones were leaving up and as policy subcommittee is looking at the updates to those, they will start coming to you next month. So it's an excellent question. I don't want you thinking that there is absolutely nothing now on the website that speaks to our commitment toward our stance toward non-discrimination. Um, there still are policies that speak to non-discrimination and uh, that harassment will not be tolerated. And, but, and those will be updated. This one she just suggested eliminating in the near term and then we'll update the remaining parts. I wonder, uh, Ethan and Christine, is there anything in this policy, uh, aside from the outdated portion, that is to date and accurate, but not covered in any of the other ACAs? Not that I found. That it, it's, it's really, it's out of date and redundant it really does is not um it, everything that we're updating is has a we have a policy in place and that we're working on the updates this policy is um not necessary and then if anything would lead more to more confusion i think because it is not quite the you know it isn't quite as update as the other two policies that are up there so it could actually be a bigger problem if it remains okay ethan any other comments to add I, I, just, I would yeah i mean i think that was great christine i think i would just add also to, to annie's point that the the i know it's not the the necessarily the policy but the the fact that the handbooks have been updated to reflect up-to-date laws and regulations i don't know if having that plus this in the same space necessarily get, gives a, an, any clearer picture to, to kind of the point that you're making, Humer, which I think is a valid one. Like, you know, like what about not having anything in there? But if we have those uh, those policies in the handbook that that are up to date, I think that provides a little bit more guidance in this this space of a month. If there is, if there were to be any questions about it, I have a question. Yes, Tara. Um, so. Generally, what we have for policies don't differ very greatly from other districts in the state. Um, we all have something that at least um, kind of resonates in some form um, in a lot of ways um, can be very, very similar. So if this is something that, you know, was looked at by our attorney, um, what do other districts have in place? Um, because I understand the redundancy in it and maybe outdated language in it. Um, but, you know, are other schools just completely eliminating it as well? Or are they adding something in its place, even if it's something that reflects and further, um, further um, supports what's already in our handbooks? 
Um, so, so the answer is yes, Kim sends out to all of the, I mean, as you know, many school districts use the exact same counsel, sent it yeah. out to everybody that use this, this, and this, get rid of this. If you go on MASC's website, I don't believe such a policy called AS, ACADR even exists. So, um, and also you'll notice that in this existing policy, it has very specific procedures for mm -hmm. how one is to respond in terms of doing an investigation. And they actually don't match what is in our handbook, what's required by law, and what we're expected to do. So to Ethan and Christine's point, it creates massive confusion, like which one of these are you doing? So when I get rid of the one that we're not to be doing, follow what's in the handbook. And no, MASC does not have an ACAB or that I can find anywhere. The attorney for multiple school districts said, get rid of that, I even double checked really, just get rid of it, get rid of that. And the policy subcommittee has all the policies or recommended replacement policies and they went through um, first reading of those this evening. Okay. Um, I, uh, it, hearing your support for this and the fact that we're covered, we're not, by eliminating this, we're not eliminating something that is not presently covered by our policies, not necessarily our handbook. Everything that are, is in our handbook should be in our policies. Uh, but that what we're eliminating is not going to leave a loophole. Um, I would be in support of eliminating it um, in light of that. Tara? Yeah, I look forward to seeing the updated ones too. And I think that'll further help us kind of look at this and understand that we're covered and there are no, using your language, loopholes. Yes. Um, I noticed that MASC does have an ACAB. Correct. Not a dash R. Do we have that ACAB <clears throat> in place? Uh, yes, we have an ACAB and that the policy subcommittee read tonight for the first time all of the recommended revisions to that. We have an existing ACAB. It is still on our webpage. Uh, under district policies and the policy subcommittee will be presenting for first reading next month, ACAB, sexual and sex-based harassment and retaliation. Okay, very good. All right, do I hear a motion to approve the elimination of ACAB-R? So moved. Is there a second? Seconded. All in, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, very good. Thank you, Policy Committee. Uh, moving on to the Hartsbrook Annual Approval, Annie. Yes, as the name uh, implies, every year. So I visited Hartsbrook. They submitted all of their documentation. You can see what I am expected to review while I'm there. And uh, I reviewed all of their documents. I was on site. I checked those things that one has to visually ensure, and they have done everything they're required to do. So I recommend that the school committee vote to approve Hartsbrook. All right. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve uh, Hartsbrook's, uh, to give Hartsbrook their annual approval? So moved. So moved. All right, second. I hear, okay, terrific. First by Christine and a second by Tara. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, motion passes, thank you. Uh, moving on to superintendent updates. Annie, thank you so much for sending these out weekly. They've been very helpful. Um, is there anything you want to highlight from this? Uh, no, just always want people to have one, just a reminder to the public. The school committee does receive these weekly summaries in an email. The public sees them because they will always be updated, the most recent at the top, and linked into agendas. Um, so people can see those. And you can go to any past agenda, and if you click on the link for superintendent updates, you'll have the most recent version of what's there. Um, no, just always the, want to give the committee a chance to ask any questions and have it on the agenda in the event that somebody in the public uh, came to public comment and had it. I, I do have to say that I was very sad to miss the Board of Trustees dinner. It's something I look forward to doing every year. And this year I needed to, uh, th th I was called again to, um, help my father uh, through um, a health related uh, challenge. And so I was unable to make that night. He's doing, he's doing 
great and improving. Uh, but I hope you all got to go. They're such a great group and they're very enthusiastically in support of all that we do. And so was it a good night? Very nice. Very nice. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, terrific. Well, great. Huge thanks to the Board of Trustees for hosting us again. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving on to the next item of the agenda. Um, the Green, Works, Green School Works Grant Program and Select Energy Proposal. Annie. Yes. So very quickly, there's nothing to vote on here. Just because we've heard about this in discussions that we've had about geothermal. And part of my charge is to be always scouring the horizon for potential funding sources to assist us with these projects. The Green School Works Program has not been formally uh, posted yet. So they're still putting together the RFP that they would post and then people could apply for funding. Uh, just I right now, how it reads is that uh, in order to be eligible, a school district applying for this program would need to be in an environmental justice community. It is not one that does not mean that we don't care about environmental justice. It has to do with very specific criteria about demographics, median income, and other things. I think there's four criteria. Um, so the community doesn't need that. The other option, if the community doesn't need that, is a, if you are a Title I school. In our district, Hadley Elementary School is a Title I school. Hopkins Academy is not a Title I school. And so that the reason I connected the select energy proposal that you folks heard about, I want to say almost a year ago, perhaps over last summer, where they presented that to us. Um, so this, if they write this RFP the way they're currently describing it, Hopkins Academy would not be eligible because Hadley does not meet the community criteria. And the other option is to be a Title I school. Hopkins Academy is not a Title I school. However, if we thought that it made sense to explore the possibility of a solar project at Hadley Elementary School, Hadley Elementary School, if they don't change the criteria, might very well meet the criteria. And certainly a solar project at Hadley Elementary could help with any increased energy costs we may see should the school committee vote to move forward with the energy conservation measure of geothermal. There's nothing to do at this point. I just wanted to keep the public and the school committee posted so we will keep our eyes on this funding opportunity. We'll keep you apprised of what the requirements are. And I just wanted to, as we continue our conversations about energy conversa cons conservation measures and our overarching strategy um, that certainly perhaps there is a role that had the elementary could potentially play in a project at Hopkins Academy. That's all I have for that. Thank you, Annie. Really glad that you have found this opportunity and whatever we can do to be helpful to them in all that we've learned about building envelopes and energy efficiency. And um, it's a great uh, opportunity to uh, network with them, I would say. Uh, in the event that an, that could help uh, them know more about us and want to fund a solar initiative at Hadley Elementary School, I think that would be uh, a, a really great thing to bring in funding that would help us offset the cost of doing that, having more options. Um, so thank you for looking into that. I will say that the select um, canopies that are at Stonehill College um, for the it's above the student parking um is a fantastic a fantastic addition it it's it's very impressive so i was just I thought, <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna google that and uh and try to find them thank you so much for that tip um great i've made note all right moving on to um Item M, school department capital requests, STM and ATM. Um, here to join Annie to tell us about it is Chris. Yes. So as a starting point, you have three links there. We'll start with that first link, school department capital request, STM and ATM. Uh, 
Chris and I received what you have in the packet from town hall on perhaps Thursday or Friday of last week. We uh, were fortunate enough to be able to meet with the interim or acting town administrator, who's also Chief Mason, the police chief, and with Linda Sanderson, the treasurer, treasurer, so they could walk us through what they're recommending to the capital committee. Ultimately, the town's capital committee that will have a meeting tomorrow at two o'clock, and I believe Christine Pipchinski mm -hmm. intends on attending that meeting. Um, they ultimately will make their own votes and recommendations. But what you see here is what the treasurer is recommending at this point in time and the um, town administrator and the chief of police. And you'll see that a number of the, the majority of the school items are listed under debt exclusion. And you'll also see in the notes that at this point in time, the recommendation is that there would be no debt exclusion articles at special town meeting, which is now scheduled for November, help me, 14th, I believe. Is that right? Did I just make that up? Okay, I'm right. November 14th, special town meeting is now scheduled for November 14th. They would not do debt exclusion borrowing articles. Those would happen at annual town meeting. If that is the case, then you can assume that everything that's under debt exclusion would happen if uh, capital committee and select board and others agreed, would happen at annual town meeting in May. Because they're debt exclusion, they would then require a ballot vote uh, within, I can't remember, 30, 60, 90 days, Jessica Spanknagel knows, but then folks would have to go to the ballot. So it's a two-part process to pass first on town meeting floor, and then secondly, it would go to the ballot. What they have for the school department that could potentially be a special town meeting is just over $12,000. And that is money that would help us make some minor adjustments and improvements to uh, fix some of the issues we have in our ADA compliant uh, bathrooms at Hopkins Academy. What you also see here is um, the second bullet M. I is all town capital requests by funding source for fiscal year 25. That just gives you an idea of the recommendations in terms of every department's capital requests, which ones are being recommended for reserves cash budget, which ones are being recommended for debt exclusion, et cetera. And the final thing you have are the capital requests by department going out about 10 years. I'm extremely grateful that Linda provided us all this information. It's very thorough because if you recall at your last meeting, part of the discussion you all had and something Paul brought up was, boy, it would really be helpful to kind of know all the pieces. What is the town looking at in any particular fiscal year in terms of capital? What Chris Desjardins and I discussed, and we discussed this with Linda and the chief, is that we thought perhaps that it would make sense since all of those articles at the top, if nothing changes, would not be, they would not be in this special town meeting warrant. It would not be discussed until May. Our thinking was that perhaps what we want to do is that Chris Desjardins, Chris Pip, the capital liaison, and I as a starting point, and bring all this back to the school committee, would look at various, all the capital items that we have and this was a suggestion even of Linda's, is to try to organize them as like a school construction article in a given year. So not to be so particular, which also gives us some freedom if a town votes for, for us to have funding. If something changes, a school construction article gives us a little bit more freedom than let's vote on painting when all we're doing is painting, right? And that we would cluster construction articles together and spread them out over a 10 year capital plan. And we would cluster them in a way that made sense. So for example, we might suggest a criteria could be start with safety, followed by or on par with accessibility. So safety and accessibility, followed by aesthetic, not that aesthetics don't matter, but that's an example of a criteria. I'm not imposing one. I would say the school committee would decide what that criteria is. But we could start out and say, here's our thinking. Now push back, what would you like to see changed? Um, and why am I recommending all of this? I just think it makes sense for all of us together to be clear about we're asking for these things or this particular item now because 
This is the criteria that we applied to it. Um, because keep in mind, if we're talking debt exclusion, the town has to vote to borrow every single time. And I think, I think taking into consideration the information we have now of what other departments are looking for and being really clear about why do we think we need this thing right now? I think that it'll be important for us to have a clear criteria, be on the same page and have a compelling argument um, because that exclusion is we're asking a lot of the town to do that. Thank you, Annie. Um, appreciate you taking us through that and um, being judicious about when we make the asks for what items. Um, and I fully support your uh, analysis. Uh, I welcome other questions and comments from the team no. as well. Christine? No, I'm, all, I'm, I'm still sort of looking through this. Okay. All right, sorry. I'm I'm taking unmuting as a signal of, of having something to say, but that's okay. Uh, Tara and Ethan. I'm I'm with you. I, I I mean I know obviously this means we have to you know kind of slow play a few things and put things off to 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 the spring, but I think um I still like our plan. I still like our you know what we have planned to do moving forward and you know not all of this is going to happen right away so i just have to kind of temper my expectations sometimes and i should clarify something i'm sorry terry i know you're off me but you just made me think of this ethan and i don't think i was completely clear although the town has indicated that all of the articles above that they were recommending at this time for debt exclusion one of the things that krista jardin and i discussed was and we talked about this with the town administrator and the treasurer um perhaps looking at something like IT, because as you can imagine, look at the timing of that. If we're waiting until annual town meeting, then we're waiting till ballot, our, our replacement IT is not coming in until next summer. Um, mm -hmm. But perhaps we can look at our itemized list of what is in that $109,000 and say, okay, what are what absolute necessity about devices in hand? So we would also suggest perhaps then saying to the town, is there a way that the IT request could fall under reserves cash budget. And can we do that at STM, special town meeting, excuse me. So that was one thing I wanted to be clear about. I'm sorry, Tara, I know you came off mute, but when you talked about things slowing down, I would, tech would then say, let's let's try to move tech there. And these minor, we had, we had disability accessible bathrooms at Hopkins. These were minor adjustments, as you can tell, for $12,000, you're not building an ADA compliant bathroom. So, moving that out, including that in a future construction article and moving the tech down to uh, reserves cash budget if the town thought that was a good idea. So sorry about that, Tara. Thank you, Annie. I appreciate you adding that. And I agree, that makes a lot of sense. Tara. No, I, <clears throat> I have no questions about it. I think this makes sense for us to be able to look at it. I, I like Annie's logic behind it. Um, and I think it allows for a little bit more flexibility. And if something comes up a little more urgently or things need to be moved around, it allows flexibility. And I think it's another way that um, <clears throat> we're working with the town on things. When you look at fire and, and safety and whatnot, um, this allows us to, even though the town always knows we work with them. We are somewhat of a little bit more of a separate entity and this kind of um, brings us a little closer in and I think that just helps for them to understand where we're at too. So I, I think this makes good sense. Yeah, Christine, any final thoughts? No, I agree with everyone um, with what they've been saying. Um, <clears throat> so I think, yeah, just go ahead with what we're, with what, Annie and Chris suggest. Great, very good. All right, Annie, do you need a vote on this? I had a vote there, but I don't think I do. So you guys all know what we're gonna try to do and because I don't have a yes. formal vote for you, I don't, so. Okay, all right, terrific. Thank you, bring it back to us when you have a vote, if you need a vote. All right, moving on to the uh, item N, business manager report, Chris. Okay, so I have two reports for you tonight, uh, the first, is the uh, budget expense report. Um, you know, it's still early in the year, so there's, there's really not, you know, a heck of a lot going on. A lot of salaries just had um, one or two payrolls at this point in time. 
Um, there are some lines that are at this point in time over budget, which might surprise you if you're looking at it. You know, how on earth could we be over budget? Um, and what uh, the majority of these are, um, something like special ed transportation, for example, shows zero budgeted, yet there's $200,000 encumbered. Um, and what we actually uh, did was, you know, we we budgeted for the 240 SPED grant to pay for transportation and some circuit breaker funds, um, but we haven't gotten the grants yet, so we kind of just put it into the general fund. And once those grants are approved, we can transfer the expenses over. So um, there were a number of accounts like that, actually, that, you know, it's it's kind of just a, a parking place right now for the uh, purchase orders until we actually get the grants approved, and then we'll move them over. I don't know if anybody had any particular questions about any um, you know lines on the report. I can certainly answer those if you have any. I'm seeing uh, I'm saying shaking head. So no, I think there are no questions on this. Um, we can move on to the next report. Sure. Okay, that's the revolving account report. Um, some of the accounts we haven't, uh, like for example, lunch. We still haven't received the June revenues. So Kelly is actually reaching out to the state asking where those June revenues are. Um, I haven't heard back yet, so uh, I'm not really sure what's going on with that. I did check with her and she said she did submit for them. So it must just be, uh, you know, kind of a, one of those things that the payment is just arriving very late. So uh, once that is, that, that June 30th number might get bumped up. It might actually get bumped up into a later month because once the year gets closed, uh, which is coming up soon, they can't really add that deposit to June anymore. So, um, you know, the lunch account will, will increase, um, preschool revolving. This is a funky time of year really for, um, things like revolving accounts and, and grants that have a carryover from a prior year. And that is that the town hasn't quite closed out the FY 24 books yet, but yet we are, um, already, you know, three months into FY 25. So, um, we end up getting things like balances haven't been rolled over yet um, into the next year, or um, you know, in, in some cases, um, revenues haven't been posted. You know, they they um, they received the revenues. We've received some, just haven't been posted yet. So until they are, I can't include them on the report. Again, once they are, I'll go back right to July and and, and adjust. You know, if that's when the revenues were received, uh, and you'll get a more up to date report. Great. That was my only question on this report was how can we run a preschool on $941.51? Uh, but you've answered it, uh, which is that there's money uh, both in carryover balance and revenue. It's just not uh, the books having not been closed out. It, it's not reflected here. Right. Yeah. So once we get them posted, then we can add them in. Very good. Uh, colleagues, any other questions on the revolving accounts? Okay. Great, thank you, Chris. Welcome. And uh, anything to say about the geothermal project updates? Sorry, I muted. Um, well, uh, there's, um, I forgot the, my oh God, the designer's name um, slipped my mind, C-H-I, I just don't remember now. Um, C-H-A, <laughs> C-H-A. Oh, oh, I got two out of three. Okay, um, so CHA is coming out this Friday to do another walkthrough. Um, in reviewing their plans, they determined that some of our ceilings might have to be lowered in the hallways, um, which actually, and, and this is why we've done this, it fits perfectly um, and really makes us look pretty smart. So I, I appreciated that by them in that we held off on the capital plan ceiling tile replacement until this geothermal work was done because we we would hate to put new ceiling tiles in and then find out we have to move you know the height or, or try to squeeze ducts into a small space so uh, they're coming to look at it on friday just to determine what areas this will have to happen and that will help us out tremendously with the ceiling tile planning so um we have that um to, trying to think oh we we did um ann and i um, took part in a call with MSBA last week on um, some potential geothermal projects that um, HES was selected as one of the schools 
we were pretty confused because we spoke with the director of MSBA about Hopkins, and then we get an email about HES. We did ask them, are you sure you're talking about the right building? And, and they said, yes, they are. Um, there were a number of criteria that they used, but essentially um, they were gathering information for a future program. Um, they uh, took great pains to make sure that we did not think because they were talking to us, that meant that we were going to be awarded anything. Um, and so really what they're doing is gathering data from what they consider to be kind of a typical small town elementary school, both in size, age, et cetera. And, um, you know, they're asking for the building plans, electric bills, oil bills, um, items like that. And uh, so we are supplying them with all of this information and then they're just going to uh, enter it in their database and, and make some determinations then. But um, so that it was uh, it was exciting at first and then slightly less exciting when when we found out it was the wrong building. But that's OK. We're, we're willing to work with them. Well, thank you for helping them. Definitely a lot of work and then, you know, may or may not get a return on investment for that work. However, uh, if if we are able to apply and it could augment what we're planned to do anyways for the high school, then it could make Hadley Public Schools and, uh, you know, a geothermal heat, you know, uh, driven facilities in both places and uh, that that could have different economies of scale and different levers that we could push on uh, in, in, you know, stepping up the town's commitment to um, exploring some of these newer technologies. So thank you for doing that. Great. Any questions for Chris or Annie about the geothermal project timeline? Okay, and uh, you may have mentioned it, Chris, but can you tell me again what the ETA is on the um, TA? Okay, so um, the design work was at 30% complete, which was right according to their timeline at the end of August. They expect to be completed by late November, early December. Then we will get the TA study. So it's looking like um, it would be ready for a school committee vote on to go or no go um, for the January meeting. That's what okay, it looks terrific. like. Terrific. Great. And if we're, uh, you know, I think I, I believe that it, it's helpful to remind them that we're on a timeline and we're working towards that. And uh, I, I'm sure you're in touch with them regularly. And uh, thank you for being visible as a customer anxiously awaiting their TA study. I have to say they've been pretty good to work with in that, you know, it's not one of those situations like, boy, I haven't heard from these guys in months. Uh, you know, they're, they are they reach out fairly often, you know, I mean, not every week or anything, but, you know, every two or three weeks just to either ask questions or just fill me in. So that's nice to see. That is great. Great to hear. Thank you. Okay. Um, we are moving on to section five action items. We've already approved the addition of the eighth grade to the Panama field trip. We've approved the uh, hosting of uh, international students from Spain. Um, we've approved um, JFBB and eliminating ACAB-R. We've approved uh, the annual approval for our Hartsburg school as well as the acceptance of donation from Walmart. Um, approving the STM and ATM capital requests, it doesn't require a vote, but we have symbolically, uh, we're completely in agreement with your sentiments, Annie and Chris, on how to proceed. Um, approval of the payroll and expense warrants for August. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Hi. That's how you put it. <laughs> um, approval of the school committee minutes for July 22nd. So moves. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. And um, item J, approval sorry, appoint school committee representative for bus driver unit A and unit D negotiations. Annie, it's that time again. We're just getting ready. 
We're just kidding. Okay. <laughs> it'll probably, I would imagine it'll start, uh, I would imagine after the holidays, a whole host of reasons, but good to get some of this off the ground. Well, or at least know who, who's going to be doing it. Right. Okay. Terrific. Um, I, I, can give I know we're not a full team right now. Uh, I, I'm sure, you know, Paul, I'm sure, uh, would love to have a, you know, a pr perspective on this, but I wonder, uh, Tara, Christine, and Ethan, do any of these sound interesting to you, being the school committee rep for the bus driver contract, the U Unit A contract, or the Unit D negotiations? Do I have to do anything you want? Christine, what, what, what's your interest? Um, I mean, I did it with, I, I've been involved in negotiations uh twice now and uh you know i'm I'm more than willing to do it it's great we're so grateful thank you um last time you negotiated which were the units that you negotiated with bus drivers and unit d correct all right the paras i think it was the paras yes um, the paras. yeah mm -hmm. Do you have any interest in unit A? And Annie, maybe you have sure. a point of view. Yeah. I mean, I think that this would come naturally to you in light of your own experience as a as an educator. Um, Annie, yeah. does that sound right? Um, and did, were you looking for one person per? I think one, if you folks are comfortable, that helps with scheduling. So just All like right. Christine was the one point person and brought back information. Of course, all, what you're granting is essentially you can as many as you want to do. You could then just vote it in a block. You're granting this individual the authority to negotiate on their behalf, but everything is subject to final vote of the mm -hmm. school committee. Right. All right, Christine. I uh, I would welcome you uh, being the rep for Unit A. Um, Tara and Ethan. I wonder if you have an interest in being the rep for the bus drivers or unit D respectively? Uh, I'm happy to help in either way. Yeah. If Ethan, you have a preference, I'm happy to do the opposite. Um, I don't I have a done, preference. I've done all three. It's I think my first year I did on school committee, I did unit D. It's been a while since I've done them, but I'm also happy to, to do whatever, honestly. Tara, it would be great if that was your first year to revisit that and see how things have evolved and changed. And um, happy to. we would love your thinking on that. Happy to. Thank you. Okay, terrific. And that leaves the bus driver uh, contract. Ethan? I'm in. Sure. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Appreciate I see what your... Paul by not showing up to this meeting. <laughs> how did he know? <laughs> and, and honestly, if it becomes an issue where somebody can't do it. Obviously um, I'm available more during the day than, you know, you guys are, um, you, and you want me to take it. I will, that's not a problem. Thank you, Christine. That's very generous. I really appreciate that offer. All right, um, we're gonna move. I think this might be helpful. I'm gonna assume maybe this is helpful. So I have listed Christine, uh, Uniday, Tara, Unity, Ethan, bus drivers, and does it sound like it makes sense? And Christine is a potential alternate if someone's not yes. available. It might be helpful yes. to do that now. Yes, definitely. Or any and all. So Christine Pip for alternate for all. Yes. Thank you, Christine. Oh, you're welcome. Do we need to vote on that? Um, why don't we just say those are the, the liaisons as do we hear do I hear a motion to uh assign Christine as the unit A liaison, uh, assign Tara as the unit D negotiator and assign Ethan as the bus driver uh, contract negotiator with Christine as the backup for either of those three um, should the primary not be able to make it. So moved. And all right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Terrific. Thank you. Okay. School committee updates and general announcements. Um, we're 
on section six. We're going to start with Tara, who's going to tell us a bit about the playground um, project, CPAC, and CES. Tara, you choose your order. Thanks, and I hope my dogs don't bark. Um, so um, the CPAC, um, they've changed their meeting time and I was not able to make it. So I'm hoping that I will be able to help them. They've had a change in uh, leadership. Someone's left their district. So I think they're trying to kind of reorganize themselves um, and how they're going to function. So I'm hopeful I can make their next meeting. Um, CES, we meet on Wednesday for our first school meeting of the year. So I will report back um, in October on September's meeting. Um, <clears throat> and then the playground, you have the link there. And if you go to the most recent update um, for today, I've added pictures that our playgrounds are in place. Um, wow. And our children and teachers alike are extremely eager <laughs> for them to be in use. Um, so we did um, get recognition. <clears throat> I did get an email um, that uh, East Hampton Savings Bank, Bank is pledging $5,000. Um, so thank you to East Hampton Savings Bank. Um, we're waiting on the funds for that to come in. Um, and where things stand right now, because when you look at the pictures, they look pretty darn ready. Um, so we need to get the playground inspected. Um, so um, Chris has been working on getting that coordinated. Um, wood chips need to be delivered and installed. And those are another two separate entities. So now we're up to three different entities. Um, and then if you look at the pictures, I don't have a picture of the swing set up here. It's on the other side of the building. Um, but in the top right corner, there's this disc-like thing with a big pole going up it and there's a net sitting on it so that is one of those cone spinners so the net will come up and it'll be uh shaped like a cone and that needs to get um, put together and i guess that will be put together uh within the next week i am being told as well as the swings the um structure for the swings is up just the actual swings need to go up um, so that is um, what we wait for. And I think everybody is um, working very diligently to try to um, coordinate all those moving pieces to get the playground up and running as quickly as possible, um, if not for the children than for the teachers. <laughs> so um, everybody's very excited. It came along very nicely. We're very excited on how they look. And I know Ethan probably frequents there. Um, around the building to do drop off. But if you haven't seen them yet, go take a look at them. They're, they're pretty darn cool if I can say so myself. Um, so we are going to have a grant opening. Um, we have it scheduled for October 11th at 1 p.m. That is a half day at school, at the elementary school. Um, we wanted to do it during a weekday and we wanted to do it early enough so that our large donors were at work and able to make attendance to that. We will be sending out invitations, um, written invitations to all of our large donors. Um, and then we will be spreading the word out to all of our community. Um, there will be light refreshments served. Um, there will be recognitions. And I'm hoping to see a bunch of kids playing on the playground at that time. Um, <clears throat> Another thing which um, is somewhat related, we've got um, some, uh, a hopscotch, a four square, um, a map of the United States, um, kind of randomly situated. I think the, the hopscotch is over by the um, pre-K area and the map and the four square is located um, over by the um older kid corridor kind of in between near the where the bigger playground is and our fantastic um Mr. Richards is coordinating working with some of the high school students who had done art club in previous years to restore those um restore those paintings um so he will get paint donated to him and he will work on having his students start that um hopefully next week they'll start working on that um that's 
you know, his schedule, but it'll be exciting to have a fresh coat of paint on those things and having things looking bright and cheery when we've got the new playgrounds in place and they may have other ideas on what might make it fun for the kiddos just kind of on the asphalt around the, the playgrounds. So I'll update if, if that comes along. Um, we're still we've been so focused on getting this playground in that we haven't further again addressed the do the um, donor recognition. And I'll fully admit that's mostly me um, because I just want to get these playgrounds in and I can't uh, dedicate any more brain power at the time. Um, and last but not least, um, we met with CPA last week um, and all members present unanimously voted to move forward the request for the port in place surfacing to town meeting. So on November 14th, um, this will be a CPA um, item and we are gonna work hard to try and spread the word and get as many people um, available to go to town meeting to vote for this for our kiddos. Um, so it's really exciting. We're very excited. Um, it's, a, it's a big ask and I'm hoping we can get that um, approved. Um, and as a side note, they don't do these in the winter. Um, so the, the kind of the time they stop doing these installations is end of October. So should this get approved at the special town meeting, it would be something that we would be looking to install over the summer in between the, the school years. So that way it doesn't interrupt um, kids being able to play on the structures during the school year. And I think that's and all. The, great. And in the meantime, there would be wood chips down there. Yes, wood chips will be there until then. Yep. Got it. And tell me again what the amount is. Uh, you may have said it already, but the um, CPA. The CPA, 290000 Excellent. Thank you. And congratulations on getting CPA unanimous approval. That's terrific. And I look forward to um, that successfully passing in November as well. Um, we'll all work to get the word out and be there at that new uh, town meeting date. Great. Thank you. Any questions for Tara? Okay, seeing none, let's move on to finance. Um, there hasn't been a tri-board meeting. Um, and actually I thought we had had a conversation about, about the tri-board liaison, whether that should be continuing to be me or whether that should be, I'm not sure whether we came to a conclusion on that, but anyways, there hasn't been anything again, and so we're going to continue on. Um, the fields project, Paul isn't here, but I wonder, Chris, whether you could give us a little update on that. I can, yes. So we, um, we've we had some issues that have been difficult to get addressed. Um, we've been working with the contractor on that. Um, they had some people out a couple of weeks ago um, to address a list of the issues that I had sent them. Uh, but when I was out on the fields, well, sometime last week, I noticed that some of the items were not uh, done the way I would have liked them to be done. And so I sent another email out on Friday. They are going to be sending um, people out tomorrow. And I told them that I would join them on the fields tomorrow. Uh, to kind of show them exactly what I had issues with. Um, you know, rather than going on Wednesday, we, we scheduled a meeting for Wednesday um, where I would be there, the designer would be there, and, and a couple of other people. But I just thought, what if they still don't do it the way, you know, we're expecting it? We wasted another day, you know. So if I just go there on Tuesday, tomorrow, and kind of walk them through it, hopefully they'll be fixed, you know, to the way we need it done. And, uh, then we can go on. Um, a lot of new grass was planted. Uh, you, you may see, um, you know, areas that were hydro seeded and slice seeded. So that hopefully will start to show some shoots coming up in the next several days. Uh, you know, we've had decent weather for it. Um, no rain, but those sprinklers are running um, quite often to keep it hydrated. And, uh, you know, at least it's been the cool nights and the warm days really that are kind of required for grass to grow. Uh, and so I'm hoping at this point we can pretty much wrap it up this week. But again, you know, until we're we're satisfied with it, we can't just, you know, sign off on it. Chris, thank you so much for taking that approach. It would be really easy to be like, okay, well, we got it, you know, 
good enough. And, uh, you know, this is not an easy project. And thank you for just making sure that it's done right um, and holding our partners accountable. Uh, appreciate that. You're welcome. Any, que any questions for Chris? Okay, great. Let's move on to uh, policy. Uh, Ethan and Christine, you already shared with us uh, a whole bunch of things. Is there anything else to give us an update about uh, around no, the horizon? I, yeah, I mean, I guess we kind of got into it a little bit, but we kind of took the first glance at a lot of the non-discrimination and sexual harassment uh, policies uh, that that we need to kind of revise based on 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 our um on our lawyers. So I think we'll 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 continue to look at those. And as as Annie shared with us in the policy subcommittee meeting, it's it's policy season. So it looks like we're going to be looking at a lot of uh, policies coming up. All right, great. Sounds like fun. Okay, moving on to um, item F, general announcements. Um, Annie, do you want to share this one? Uh, so this is usually um, David, it's uh, an opportunity for David Phil. If, uh, if he, That's right. The town side. That's right. And so uh, when David is at our meeting, we'll give him the opportunity to share with us uh, a little bit about the uh, what's going on on the select board. Okay, um, we're moving next to item seven. Um, and the chair will entertain a motion to enter into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to litigation and to discuss the deployment of security personnel or devices or strategies with respect thereto, and not to reconvene an open session if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body and the chair so declares, then we will go into executive session. So uh, would anyone like to for, support that motion? So moved. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Does this need to be a roll call vote, Annie? Okay, Christine? Aye. Tara? Aye. Ethan? Aye. Kumara, aye. All right, motion passes. Thank you everyone for attending tonight and uh, we will um, 